Hey Rat Bags, it's Jay. Today I'm giving you the lowdown, especially for PlayStation and Switch players, about what type of game Grounded really is. What has it got inside it that makes it different from so many others, and why you're going to enjoy one of the best survival games going, finally. I'm going to list the 10 things that really sell Grounded for me, what makes up the core mechanics of the game, some really cool features that it has, and game modes that you should be trying out, and other info. So if you like the sound of this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I've been the number one source for news and previews, as well as guides and gameplay for Grounded for over three years. I'm going to continue to do that for the PlayStation and Switch launch. If you need help with Grounded, chances are I've done it already and I'm going to be doing brand new fresh guides. So make sure you're subscribed and you've got a notification bell dinged. Let's go. So very basics. Grounded is a one to four player co-op survival adventure game where you will be trying to make yourself bigger after mysteriously shrunken down and dumped in a mad scientist backyard. You'll fight bugs, spiders and a lot more as you try and gather new weapons and gear, build bases and uncover the mystery of why you've been shrunk. Grounded has a huge amount of different aspects to it, whether or not you're a lover of base building, someone that likes crafting expansively or just getting into combat and fighting as many creatures as possible without dying. Grounded may look like a cute and cuddly Pixar game at some points, but don't let it mislead you. That's the number one point I'm making right now. This is a true survival game if you want it to be. The backyard is a hugely dangerous place. You will need different tiers of armour and weapons to progress, encountering much tougher bugs as you explore the yard. You will need to make sure you've got plenty of supplies of food and water. Along the way you'll be gathering things like milk bowlers where you can upgrade and this is where the RPG mechanics come into it a little bit but it's still truly a survival game at heart. You'll get to the point that you're pissing off some of the bugs and they will come and raid and attack your bases. So you've got to think about defenses and about what location your base is at. Grounded has some of the best and toughest boss fights I've encountered with lots of complex combat systems as well as arenas filled with traps. For a truly hardcore survival experience, you may want to play on Grounded's toughest mode, which is Woe Mode. With this mode activated, enemies become much tankier, they do more damage and you'll need to eat and drink a lot more often. Even on normal game mode, Grounded can be a challenging and tough game. I've heard of many players pretty much giving up in the early stages as they kept getting owned by wolf spiders. So you have to take it seriously despite the cartoony look of the game. Take your time, don't venture too far from base, gather enough resources to get yourself healing and bandages and then start to progress and explore. You'll discover lots of upgrade stones, quartzite and marble, as well as candies that you can infuse your weapons with to do specific damage types against enemies. All enemies have generally weaknesses and strengths, meaning you can make light work of a lot of bugs as long as you've got the right weapon equipped with the right element attached. Where Grounded excels as a survival game is the way that it guides you through, with a quest system that will give you lots of objectives to do if you're feeling a bit lost or not sure or where to go. This is quite different from a lot of other sandbox games that really do just dump you in it. But again, if you want a true survival experience, you can turn pretty much all of this off and have a much tougher, more survival-esque sandbox experience. There are so many different bugs and creatures in the game that you'll have to get used to their attack patterns, again find out their weaknesses and really learn how to fight each and every one. I rate Grounded as having some of the best combat going in any game, let alone just survival. Okay, maybe it's not on the same par as Dark Souls games. You can't actually dodge, you can only block in Grounded, but it does have a perfect parry system where you can stun enemies greatly and get in a good few more hits. And this definitely elevates it above games like Art Survival Evolved and The Forest. It's on par with what you expect in Conan, but a lot less janky. The need for food and water and the abilities to get more ways to craft better foods and make sure you've got containers that can hold more drops becomes a lot easier as you progress. But in the early days, it is a chore, just like most survival games. As you go through the yards, there will be specific events that you can encounter that can change the course of what the backyard looks like and the dangers that may exist. Like plugging this haze canister will unleash an infected horde of bugs that will spread far across the yard. But the plus point is it makes easy work of exploring some of the areas to get more upgrade stones. With distinct biomes similar to what you encounter in other survival games, you'll get used to the flow and ebb of going to one specific area or another to get certain resources. 
Some areas will have greater abundance of materials like splinters in a termite hill or higher concentration of enemies that you'll need their bug parts to craft your armors and weapons. A key part of the game is obviously the crafting and how you progress making better armor sets and upgrading and unlocking new weapon recipes. A lengthy start, but yes, I really want to emphasize that Grounded isn't just some RPG, it isn't some cozy kids game. At its core, it's a really engaging survival game. But it does have a good story at its heart, and that's the second point I want to get across. Famously semi-inspired by Honey Eyes Shrunk the Kids and 90s cartoons, Grounded does take a huge amount of inspiration from both and a lot more. The beginning of the game has a whole bunch of different adverts that will bring back a lot of memories for some of you boomers like me out there. Alright, I'm not that old, maybe millennials. But things take a serious turn when a news kicks in and relays that four children have gone missing in addition to other teenagers who have disappeared around the neighbourhood. Max, Hoops, Willow and Pete are our four main protagonists. You can't customise your character in Grounded. The developers wanted you to have a connection and it mattered and was important to the rest of the story about your characters being defined. As I said, you're dumped in a backyard of a mad scientist seemingly. And in fact, he's the guy that you need to try and find. The story has so much more going for it than any other survival game I've ever played. And this is where Obsidian's RPG roots come into play. It has a huge influence from Dungeons and Dragons as well, with lots of the armor sets and weapons being directly inspired, as well as the class-based kind of combat. You will have to find the missing scientist. You'll have to unravel the story of why he was also shrunken down, how some of his science experiments have been successful, and why his previous company, Omnance, want to shut him down. Along the way, you'll meet a NPC helper in Burgle, the cranky, slightly mad robot that will guide you with missions and progression through the story. So not only do you get lots of exposition delivered to you to guide you along and keep the story going, but you'll find a huge amount of lore in data tapes as well as notes scattered all across the yard, painting a bigger picture of why Wendell, the mad scientist, has done some of the things he's done and where he might be heading to. It's miles above other games like Small Land, Power World and maybe even any other recent survival game you can think of. I definitely put it up there alongside games like Subnautica if you love the idea of having more lore and rich story interwoven in your games. I don't want to say too much more as I will veer into spoiler territory, but trust me when I say the story is as compelling as a lot of other survival games. It's not Mass Effect, but it has got some great moments in it that really propel and help reinforce that this is a great hybrid, if people want it to be, of RPG and survival with story. Also added to that is the fact that the kids speak to each other constantly. If you're playing multiplayer with your friends, you'll find that they interact and come up with different lines based on what you're doing. This also makes the game feel much more alive. So a great survival game with a good amount of story that engages you and keeps you wanting to progress to find out what happens next. What other big elements make up Grounded? Well, number three, I guess, really is the base building. It is important for a lot of people and it's pretty crucial to the game where you have to build defenses. Now that some of them options can be turned off, you don't have to have bugs come and attack you. And it isn't like seven days to die where you're gonna be attacked and have your whole base obliterated. Although some bugs can do a bit more damage than you might imagine. Grounded has multiple different build tiers that you'll be able to unlock. From the common grass and clover roofs that you might have to use in the initial days, to weed stems and then eventually mushroom bricks and maybe even cement. And to that crow roof pieces, parkour, flooring made out of burr, and even more roof pieces made out of oak. There are some great different types of tile sets in Grounded for you to build castles, forts, or just regular bases with curved pieces, triangles, specially curved foundations, and a lot more that other survival games have taken years to add. It's all done by a blueprint system, heavily inspired by the forest's original system of building, where you place blueprints down, and then you and your friends can contribute to the build by refilling with the ingredients needed. And it's another great selling point with Grounded. Again, not every game has this or does it as well, where you can plan out your builds in advance and go ahead and see if it's for you. If you don't like something, there's no penalty for placing down pieces. You'll be able to instantly destroy it and get all your resources back as well. 
Like most good survival games, yes, it is a bit of a grind though, getting some of the build pieces needed, as a lot of it does require a lot of chopping, obviously trees and grass, as well as making up some of these more advanced materials like the mushroom and cement. Grounding maybe doesn't have the same freedom that you might have found recently more with small land or some of the nuances that you can mess around and test the building limits with games like Ark. But it's more than efficient and it makes up for that with a huge amount of quality of life features which I'll talk about at the end. But basically you've got wireless crafting. As long as you're within range of your base with your chest filled with loot, it's super easy and effortlessly crafting and building. Now if that's starting to sound too cosy, remember what I said, it's a proper survival game and a proper adventure action game too, where combat is a major focus. A variety of different ways to play it. If you want to be a ranger class, you can. You can mix and match your different arm sets to get all sorts of perks and buffs, with each one of them having unique properties. Learning what creatures to fight from distance and what ones to get up close and personal with is definitely something you'll learn along the way. The combat does rely on you having quite good trigger figures though, so that you can perfect block and perfect parry. This is an element that does let the game down at times for some people because they don't feel like they've got the reflexes enough to really get into it and hopefully defend against so many attacks. Especially when it comes to Grounded's epic boss fights with over seven unique different battles and even more with the brand new New Game Plus that is coming as part of the PlayStation and Switch launch or at least variations and different ways to encounter some of these boss fights. You can even be a mage and fire spells from your staves in Grounded, eventually defeating the toughest boss, the infected Broodmother, unlocking a bombardier set where you can fire an everlasting grenade. But for players that really don't gel with perfect parrying, it can be a bit too much of a challenge, and this is where turning it down to mild will help, that you don't take as much damage, you do more damage against creatures. There are specific sets that will help just in general with blocking, but the goal or secret to Grounded really is about being able to perfect parry and stun a lot of enemies. A lot of the creatures will have all sorts of varied different attacks, and surprisingly, despite how many bugs there are, you don't really see a lot of repetition. Sure, some bugs seemingly have borrowed other elements and other abilities, but they've definitely been reskinned in a great way to show a little bit of difference or given some more uniqueness. And even when boss fights almost repeat, like from the Broodmother to the Infected Broodmother, you get a slurry of new attacks and surprises to really mix up the meta. It's the one criticism though, like I mentioned earlier, that people have always wanted to have added to the game, and that probably is the roll method. Being able to dodge and duck aside will definitely add another element, and we can only hope that might come to grounded number two. But to me, the combat in grounded is probably some of the most satisfying in survival games that I've played once you learn the nuances of it. And with so many different weapons, so many different armor sets, literally more than any other game I could think of, bar maybe Conan Exiles, you really will have a choice in how you deal with things. From glow-in-the-dark flaming swords to poison-induced dripped daggers, Grounded pretty much has it all. Two-handed hammer user? Sure, why not? Go ahead with electrifying robotic arm? Yeah. Like to throw spears? Absolutely can do that too. This is where a lot of the RPG pedigree again comes into it from Obsidian and the ability to make and add a whole bunch of weapons that feel unique and not always feel useless. The progression through the different armor sets where you go from tier one all the way to tier three and possibly now tier four in a new update really charts your progress and it becomes something you really strive to get, not just to complete the game, but just so that you can have more fun taking on different enemies in different ways. And on top of all that, we've got the mutation system where you can find and unlock new mutations that give different buffs and attributes as you play. With some reinforcing damage you do with blades, so daggers and more, and others giving you more chance of critical hit or avoiding poison. This then get coupled together with trinkets or charms that you can find that again give you another layer and flavor of different combat methods that you can utilize. Grounded has a free tier combo system currently, and it has undergone significant changes during its early access and after its full release. But it seems pretty settled now that basically every time you do your third hit, it's going to do a lot more damage than the first two. And usually you get buffs applied to it from trinkets and sometimes mutations that will do things like slow enemies down, or do more critical damage with a third hit, or speed up the attacks. 
So there's lots of depth there to build a character and really get into nuances of making like the perfect build to be an archer, the perfect build to be a critical hit dealer. And some of that you're still going to need a good amount of exploration to obviously get because you're going to need to find the recipes, the weapons, the resources to go ahead and craft a lot of this. And that's where the next point comes in. Number five, exploration and reward. Grounded, like many static game maps, will maybe suffer from repetition eventually for a lot of players. But the way that you explore the yards and the verticality of some places and dungeons and areas that you'll have to explore while being small really make this feel a bit everlasting longer. There are tons of secrets though in Grounded also to propel you, like I said, unlock new recipes for hidden weapons and more. Some access to areas is kind of gated about where or what you're doing in the story. Like for example, just a spoiler here, little one, you have to complete four of the dungeons to gain access to the final dungeon and obviously the end game. Now you can take care of them dungeons almost in any order, but you will need specific items to break through, like bombs to blow up the haze laboratory doorway, or breathing equipment to get and tackle the underwater pond labs. Finding the milk molars that you'll use to also go ahead and upgrade your abilities, like give you more health, more stamina, the ability to have more mutations active, these are important as well. Gold and white ones that you'll find, whether it's in the water or all around the yard, these are a must and will be certainly something you'll have to get hold of in New Game Plus as they're going to be randomised. The map has specific points for a lot of items. You will always find the same resources in the same area, like berries in the hedge and salt in the sandbox. But you can be rewarded sometimes by uncovering loot, digging up with your spade to get smaller amounts of some resources. So you will have to make regular returns to certain locations to pick up the resources that you can only really find in abundance there. One of my favorite ones is the charcoal barbecue area where you'll have to go and get pieces of charcoal if you wanna make cement as well as make certain items. This area is extremely hot and if you don't have the right gear, you will burn to a crisp. The hedge is filled with berries, spiders and also a complicated parkour challenge before you get to the main laboratories. And many of these laboratories or dungeons will be quite labyrinthian where you'll have to spend a lot of time exploring, finding ways to open doors with passwords or special buttons to really get the most amount of gear and the end game goal of picking up special chips that you'll return to that crazy robot to get progress to the end game. There's a great array of Easter eggs that you will find, which I'm not gonna spoil in this video, but fans of the forest, you'll be happy, as well as possibly fans of toads that you used to play with as action toys, or maybe as a 90s kid on computer games. And now with New Game Plus, a big criticism of Grounded, obviously, just like other static games like Conan Exiles and The Forest is, that you do get bored of the map, with New Game Plus, they're revamping and remixing stuff. Every time you begin a New Game Plus mode, you'll change some of the colouring and the different aspects of the yard, different types of enemies that might spawn with the infused with new attributes and obviously being tougher. The static same spawns that you have to collect a lot of the milk molars and raw science, which I've not even mentioned, they will be changed and randomised in New Game Plus. Add to that, until then, if you just want to complete the story, you're not someone that really enjoys New Game Plus playthroughs, some of the bosses are completely optional. They're only there for the additional challenge if you really want, or maybe mess around with the rewards and the armor sets and weapons that you get from defeating them. Like the Woz Queen, and the Broodmother, and the Mantis, they are all optional. There's always something to discover in Grounded. I think the map does a much better job than others of keeping you engaged, at least for a good 50 or 60 hours. Now, if I'm starting to sound like a salesman for Obsidian, I pretty much am. I love this game. I rate it as one of my favourite games of all time. I've devoted over a thousand hours of playing and just as many hours editing and making video over the years. But let's start wrapping things up a bit more quicker and succinct now as we talk about some of the mechanical stuff that you can do with Grounded. It has got a great way to customise the game and make it as difficult or as easy as you want. Like I mentioned much earlier, with the WoW mode, you can also make it a complete RPG experience. If you're not a fan of survival, you can absolutely make it something you don't have to worry about eating or drinking and play it just like a regular RPG. Grounded's custom mode has learned from some of the best, like Ark, where you can customise almost every facet, whether or not you want unlimited recipes to be able to unlock, whether or not you want all the resources being able to free craft. 
building integrity so you can make crazy, crazy builds and even reducing or increasing the amount of health that enemies have as well as how much damage you take through falling. The customization is some of the best I've seen. While it doesn't have a thousand sliders like Ark Survival Evolved does, it certainly has more than enough to really make the playthrough that you want tailored to how you want. And the creativity doesn't stop with just your base building. Playgrounds is a relatively newer update that got added after 1.0 that has progressed and improved with your time. Effectively, you can make all sorts of different levels. You can make your own grounded DLC, your own parkour maps, your own adventure maps, challenge maps, mystery maps. Want to create an arena battle where you can fight any bug at any time? That's what you can do with the power of playgrounds. These are maps that you and your friends can build together, resizing objects that you'll find in your playthrough to make crazy, crazy maps. I've played everything from cookie lemonade clicker games to being able to do parkour challenges like my only down map, which is the fourth most downloaded map in Grounded Playgrounds. It's added a lot of replayability for people that really enjoy the grounded aspect of creativity. Not everyone's down, a lot of people still just prefer the survival aspects and didn't really want too much time devoted. It was a surprise kind of thing to happen, but in the end, I think it's good for the long-term health of the game to have something where you can add more creativity. They also give you an opportunity to see and test stuff in more real time. Don't have to keep grinding to take on certain bugs and enemies. You can spawn in whatever you want. And that includes bugs, which makes it a bit different from the standard creative mode that you already have, where you can literally fight and test, see if your skills improve using different armor sets before maybe investing in them in your real game. There's some deep technology with logic gates and switches and buttons that you can use as well to make really complex stuff. There is no mod support for Grounded. It is predominantly a console focused game, with over 75% of the player base being on console versus PC. But this is the closest thing that you're going to get with that capability to customize and make new creations. And the best part, everyone can do it. No PC elitism here. All of this will be able to be done on your Switch or your PlayStation. And when it comes to the consoles and the platforms that you play, well, the best news there is you can play together. You can share your creations across the platforms as full cross-play and cross-progression is ingrounded. Play it on your PC. As long as you're logged into your Windows account, you can then sign in on your Switch or PlayStation and carry on your playthrough. Xbox and PS Ponies Unite, you can play together now in true cross-play. You still might need online subscription to whatever network you're with, i.e. PlayStation Plus or Nintendo Online, to play some of the multiplayer aspects, but it's not needed if you just want to play single player on your own. Sadly, there is no co-op local play, and it isn't something it looks likely to be added, as this is meant to be one of the last planned feature updates for Grounded. But with the ability to cross-play across Switch, even your mobile devices where you can play Grounded on cloud, it's doing far more than a lot of other games in terms of where or who you can play with. A lot of people over the years have wanted dedicated servers for Grounded, but with it only being a one to four co-op game, it didn't really make sense and I'm guessing that's why the developers never added it. What they did do though was add the share world feature. Now you might have seen this slightly in other games like Fallout 76 if you had the premium subscription, where effectively you could just play on the same world together. As long as one of you had the subscription, then you could carry on on that world, even if the original person that started it up left. Grounded took that and made it free. You can make your world a special shared world, and you can share it with your pals, and then you can go to work or college, and your friends can carry on grinding resources or building your base. You then come home and then you join that world again and you all persist and play on that same world. Unlike a server, it will shut down when no one's on it, but it is the closest thing. And I think it's exactly what Grounded's kind of needed over the years for players to be able to play at different stages or phases or contribute different times. And this can be done with any save, including the Playgrounds mode so you and your friends can build something crazy together, creative mode or story mode. But just be warned that if one of you does start triggering the story events in the world, then that will trigger for everyone else, even if they're not online. And to finish off, it is Grounded's last of planned feature content update. It looks like they want to move on to Grounded 2, which will probably be an Xbox game preview game for a while. Part of the final update that they're adding is the new Game Plus, a relatively new feature and kind of in out of the blue a little bit. It's going to offer the remix yards, like I said, that once you get through the main story and complete the objectives you need to complete Grounded, 
you go into a new yard with slight variances, new candy types that you'll have to collect and a whole host of new weapons to unlock. There's still a lot of mysteries revolving around exactly what this will entail, but there are new creatures being added like the Ant Queens alongside this update. So the replayability is even more so now with the new game plus. If you love the game of Grounded, you'll maybe enjoy playing it over and over again, taking on more challenging enemies and unlocking new gear as you progress. So there we go folks, yep, I love the game. I'm gonna promote it as much as I can because it is simply one of the best survival nay games going. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're gonna stick around and check out all my guides I've done and newer revamp ones focused directly to PlayStation and Switch players, giving you the lowdown on anything you need to know about Grounded. There's so much to do, there's so much to see, and I'm here to help you, guide you through. Until next time, I'll see you ratbags later. Looking forward to the launch, and I'll be here for a special live stream all throughout Laters.